It's not very often that you get totally enamored by a car, to the extent that its perfectly sculpted curves fill your mind from dusk till dawn. The P72 did that for me, and the day I experienced it was one that I shall never forget. I later found out that I got to talk to the company's founder, Norman Choi, and he was just such a nice, cool guy, and we just chatted, chatted about cars for a couple of minutes. It was, it was a really amazing experience. I suppose that's what made the situation so surreal. Seldom do people ever get to say that they talk to Mr. Lamborghini or Mr. Carl Benz even. And while I'm not claiming that Apollo and Di Tommaso hold anything close to the heritage of those two companies, the P72 and Apollo are certainly as exciting as any of the big brand's cars. <laughs> The Di Tommaso P72 has been misunderstood by many. Most notably, it has been said that it's a bit of a Ferrari 330 P4 ripoff. Now, I don't intend on convincing everyone that holds this stance otherwise, but I'd like to add some context surrounding that specific argument. Di Tommaso have taglined the P72 as a modern day time machine, and quite frankly, it does that very well. The P72 was designed from the get-go to be a bit of a copycat anyway. It's a car that was built to capture the emotions conveyed by cars like the Ferrari 330 P4, the Alfa Romeo 33 Stradale, and of course the Di Tommaso P70. The Di Tommaso P70 was actually an incredibly significant car in Di Tommaso's history. It was designed in collaboration with Alejandro Di Tommaso, of course, and also Carroll Shelby. It was the last car Carroll Shelby worked on before the GT40, and it actually led to quite a large row whenever he had to leave the project in order to do so. The P72 puts the designs and features of those cars in a modern context, and to me, that makes it a very lovable car. The interior is beautifully crafted. It's like the interior of a Singer Porsche and a Pagani Huayra got up to some uh, funny business and the result is astounding. A blend of copper finished automotive ornaments, fully exposed gear linkage and carbon tub all conjure into something as beautiful as the car's exterior. <laughs> It's at this stage that I must address something important. Throughout this whole time, I've been talking about the pre-production prototype of the P72. This car sits on the Apollo IE platform, and so most notably shares its high-revving V12. While the final production car is also expected to share the IE's LMP1 standard carbon fibre monocoque chassis, <laughs> <laughs> say that quickly, it will ditch the V12 in favour of a Ford-derived 5.0 Coyote V8. Now, this decision has probably been made in order to ensure that the car receives homologation for road use. It is also a perfect match for the Di Tommaso brand, which was always known for producing cars that wrap their high horsepower American V8s in beautifully elegant bodywork. They've made an effort to create an immersive driving experience by equipping it with a six-speed manual gearbox, something that is becoming ever more elusive in the supercar slash hypercar world. The V8 is also being designed in collaboration with Roush, people that maybe know a thing or two about Ford V8s, and will come with a screaming root supercharger to heighten the excitement. Let's also not forget that there are plenty of supercars that have successfully incorporated Ford V8 engines. The Ford GT shared engines with the Ford Lightning pickup truck of all things, and Koenigsegg used engines loosely related to those found in Ford Crown Vicks in their early days. <laughs> Those are two world-renowned cars that have been coveted for their driver engagement, analogue feel and ferocious exhaust note. These are the exact traits that Di Tommaso are going for with this car, and when strapped to an advanced modern chassis with technology from the team that brought us the CLK GTR, it is likely to turn all of those traits up to 11. <laughs> Thank you.
72 will be made. I, I see what they did there. And we certainly hope that their 60s inspired odometers are filled with many thunderous miles. Equally, I can understand why something like this would be kept in an art gallery. Its body design by Mr. Wong is truly something to behold. Those 60s, 70s Le Mans style lines defined by brushed copper elements, such as the exhaust and mirrors, have all accumulated together to form something that yearns to be drank in for hours. The P72 is a special beast. It's a car created as a final goodbye to the days when automobiles were unrestrained, when supercars weren't all about shaving 0 0.00024 seconds off a lap time, nor were they designed by a soulless computer. The P72 is a result of what happens when a bunch of very clever people bring back the emotion into supercars that has been missing for such a long time. <laughs> At a cool £700,000, um, rest assured I'll have to make sure my Aston Martin investments have gone very successfully after the end of this lockdown. Fascinating.